Hi everyone, this is Miss Scrippa, and in this video, um, meant for students, I'm going to show you guys how to log into Edpuzzle, um, and what it is and what your assignments might look like in there. So you're going to start out by going to edpuzzle.com, edpuzzle.com, um, and this is a website that a lot of teachers like to use because it has videos um, that they can also put questions in during the video. Um, and this is really nice because that way you don't have to watch a whole video and answer all the questions at the end. You're able to answer them as you go, and that way you're doing it right as you're learning it. So I'm going to show you just from the very, very beginning of setting up a new account. You're going to uh, make an account as a student. Um, ignore the Google part. We don't really use Google in Springfield. We use Microsoft instead. So instead, you're going to click this bottom button that says Sign Up with Edpuzzle. And your teacher will give you a class code. Um, a cl class code is usually six letters. Um, and they're kind of random. So that's something that you're going to need to ask your teacher. Um, because I am a teacher, I'm going to show you an example with one of my codes. Um, and you can confirm here um, that it's the correct class. Um, please do put in your real first and last name so that your teacher knows who you are. Um, and just be aware your teacher can see what your username is. So I'm going to just make an example here. Um, I do recommend you make your username your normal username and password that you use for um, your laptop account at school. That way you don't forget. Um, teachers can go back and tell you your username and help you make a new password, but it does take quite a bit of time. So I do recommend just make it easy, make your username your student number, um, and make your password the password that you use to log into your computer. Um, since I'm a teacher though, I don't have that. So I'm just going to make mine random. And then you're going to join the class. So this is what it looks like when you log in. Um, one thing to know is you can join more than one class. So for example, this is my biology class and our videos that we use. Um, but say your history teacher decides that they want to start using Edpuzzle also, um, you can just hit join a class over here and you can add a new class code so that you can see um, your biology and your history work. That way you're not making 10 million different accounts. Um, this is where all of your videos are, and I have kind of a lot because I've been using this class throughout the school year, um, but just keep in mind you probably will not see this many videos. Um, I typically do not, as a teacher, put due dates for them, but if your teacher does want them done by a, super, a certain day, you might need to check over in this tab if you don't see it in this one right away. Um, the way that it works is um, there's all these different videos that your teachers can assign you um, that they create themselves. Um, and as you watch the video, it'll have you answer some questions. So I'm just going to show an example. Um, and I apologize. I'm going to have to erase the volume. So this is an example of a video about Zika, which you may or may not have heard about. Um, and as you watch the video, there's going to be all these different questions that come up. Um, they can be multiple choice, or sometimes they might ask you to write in your question. Um, most examples of Edpuzzle do allow you to have captions, so I do recommend that you do that. Um, and then this is an example of a question. So if we were listening to the volume, we would learn that Zika is a virus, and then we can submit our question. Um, if you don't remember, or if maybe you missed it, you can hit rewatch, and it'll play that little section again for you. It'll tell you if you're right or wrong, unless it's an open response question. And then you just hit continue. Um, you can go back and rewatch the video with this back button right here. Um, you can choose your uh, caption language, which is really, really nice. Um, but do keep in mind, um, you do need to watch the whole video. It will not allow you to skip. All right. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, there is nothing that you need to do at the end of that video. Um, it will save automatically where you are. So say you get two thirds of the way through the video and the class period ends. When you go home for homework, it'll still be there. You won't have to start over again. It will save where you were. So for example, if I go back, it'll show me that I'm unfinished, but that I started it. And my teacher will also be able to see that I started it as well. All right, and it'll remember that I did that first question. All right, but that's pretty much it. Um, they should come up here. Once you've completed a video, you'll see it in the completed side. Excuse me, sorry, that was a sneeze. Um, but 
but that's about it. Um, just keep in mind, if you're joining a new class, um, you're just going to hit right here and ask your teacher for the code. Um, they're the ones who are going to need to know that information. All right. Um, but that's about it. You can log in and out up here. All right. But ask your teacher if you have any other questions about how to work it.